I can never get enough of that Joel Felsenstein. I can never get enough of that video. I love it so much. Thank you so much, Joel Felsenstein and Rockstar X for helping us create that video. And you are back with us on Time to Change. And it's funny that we talk about change because today's topic is about change. And I have with me today, Tiffany Castaño, the CEO and founder of Sepper in the house. And I have Manola Jack, one of our newest partners and the author of this amazing book right here, Everyday Inspiration for Change, How Daily Experiences Can Be Your Best Mentor for Change in Life and Work. And I just finished the chapter on the moon. I am not going to tell you any more about it. It was fantastic. All right. So we are in the house and we are going to start out. This is our deep dive, our short deep dives, 15 minutes to jump right in. We're talking about change. What does change mean to you? Yes. I I just thank you for that invitation and this opportunity to chat about one of my favorite subjects. And I always describe it as a lot of people are afraid of change or that I'm different and celebrating that I love change because not everyone does. But for me, I love to talk about it in its relationship to diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, but also as it relates to culture, which there are intersections between those things. And for me, it is everything that you're doing in your operations. It's everything with your people. How are you putting in place or not the right tools and systems it's all the levers that we can pull. And it's really, how are you being intentional about that? Does it connect to your mission, vision, and values? What's the strategy? And do people see themselves as a part of that? Are you including them in that process? And are you iterating on that? Are you being creative and innovating on that? Are you allowing people to be upskilled and reskilled through that? And so there's a lot of different change methodologies and principles out there, as we yeah. know. But for me, it's really, how are you operationalizing and even starting with why of, should we do this change? Why are we doing this change? Who's involved? What are the stakes? And those are some of the major pieces as well as evaluating that change. Did it work for us? If so, why were we successful? Did it not work? If not, why? And what can we change? And inviting input at that point as well. So I could go on and on. You just tell me to stop. But I think that might be a good place to stop. I'm self-regulating here. But you have a very different perspective on change. So kind of dive into that along the lines of, as, of what uh, Tiffany was saying and then kind of your viewpoint on how you feel about change. Well, I, I would like just to start off by, by giving a standing ovation to everything that Tiffany said. Um, <laughs> I, I really love how... Um, she set the scene for change being the very fabric of an organization. And I do believe that um, one of the pitfalls that I, I see across organizations when they talk about change and when they think about change is associating change to a type of intervention, an initiative, a project. And what we are quite oblivious to are all the small changes that happen every single day in every mm -hmm. interaction. And actually, what research proves is that what really chips away at our change resources of energy and enthusiasm and resilience are these small things that pile up not necessarily the big upheavals, the digital transformation, the cultural turnarounds, but these things that, you know, are there every single day and, and they are an ongoing friction. Yeah. Just as we as we talk about subtle acts of exclusion, I do believe that there are subtle acts of resistance that we don't necessarily properly address. Um, how I view change is most of the questions that I get come from, um, is this the last change? When is this change going to end? Why are we changing again? So how I start change conversations is I tell people, think about change as if it is an electrocardiogram. 
where ups and downs are good. The flat line is not mm. so good. Right. And, and I do believe that one way in which we do change huge injustice is that we sell it as an aspiration to an end state and we uh-huh. sell it as something scalable, sustainable. And at the end of the day, I do believe that change is changing and change is a journey and we should help people understand that we are getting to milestones and not to an end state not to the flat line wow i don't know what tiffany did with like her fingers like when i was clapping that <laughs> I, I can't even do it so i'm just gonna be like you know it's like that's that was a silently snapping that's like, that is like fantastic we have anything like symbols. I need to like take those little hand symbols. And like that. Uh, Don't no, you have the clapping? I ha- I do have the clapping. I do have, I I do have, she's now she's. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. <laughs> I am like, I got all the feels. 100% plus one, plus one, plus one. Plus one. All that. Wow. That was so inspirational. Yeah, what do we, how do we get leaders, Tiffany, to make those kind of mental changes and really understand how important uh, that is? I think, you know, I spoke before about this upskilling and reskilling, and there has to be a recon, a self reconciliation. I touched on EQ for a second there. And we need to have that internal self-regulation as leaders before we can then go into the external context and that environment to understand how to share that with other people. There is an order of operations to change. As Manola indicated, it is always changing. And so leaders have to be in a mindset of a growth mindset. I know that's, you know, it has become a buzzword, but truly to embrace the uncertain, hello, look at what COVID Look at that whole thing. And those who weren't able to prepare for that, which was probably one of the biggest changes you can get. But I love this description of an echocardiogram because when it is flat, when you're resistant to it and you don't want to change, you're not going to help other people change. You don't grow. That is not good for business. And so I think understanding that it is always going to shift and embracing that versus it being a one-time event. I always talk about engagement surveys, how you don't want that to be one time. And that you need to follow up and do something. Change is the same way. And we want to make sure that what we're doing makes sense. And not just from the individual perspective. What does the team think? What does the organization think? What does your board or other stakeholders, what do they think? And inviting those voices to the table as well. Otherwise, we're not in a good space. Yeah. Just not. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Manola, do you- Do you think that there is a part of what we can do as leaders that incorporates that EQ and that self-evaluation and the ability to listen, but also incorporate what feedback we can get from employees, current and possibly future employees, people that we're looking to bring in the organization to help us with that change? Absolutely. I think there's definitely a lot of uh, hope for that, but it does come with a lot of work. I just want to build on on a few amazing points that Tiffany just made. And um, circling back um, to the previous round of answers when, when we talked about frameworks and methodologies, and I do believe that part of the shift that um, we would love leaders to, to do is to really understand that we have been misusing change management as a label a little bit, and we hear management the loudest. And that made us a little bit over-reliant on frameworks and methodologies and tools before we sit with change through a lens of mindset and skill set. I always say that it's a three-legged stool. It's mindset, skill set, and tool set. And whenever I hear leaders coming, what's the methodology that you would use. Actually, the question that I hear behind that question is, how will you be able to make me feel comfortable and 
and trust that things are progressing and I will be able to recognize that progress towards what I have in mind as a vision. Right. Now, back, um, back to your point, I, I do believe that um, leaders should look beyond the surveys and, and I oftentimes talk, I, I had an amazing conversation with a colleague of mine and we were talking about survey fatigue and she actually called me out and, and she said, we are actually having survey inaction fatigue. When oh, we God. ask people and we don't act upon what they say, then eventually they will stop saying or they will say what they feel we need to get our vanity metrics checked mm. and then that's it. Um, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I, I fully answered your, your question there, but I'm, I'm happy to take additional prompts. No, I, I, I think it's all great information. And I think, I think when we go back to square one, square one is being able to understand that it is a process. It's a group of processes that involves listening and really diving in and taking multiple actions around that information that we're constantly gathering. It should be a constant flow of information and gathering and including other people. So as we get towards the end of this conversation, man, we should have made this like a, one of our people initiative uh, events. Like this could have been an hour plus, but- There's still time. There's still time. Um, we, I want to get final comments and we'll start with Manola and we'll go to you, Tiffany. Um, I want to get final comments on what you would like to see from leaders moving forward for the rest of this year on how to approach change. I would love to see more leaders understanding that we use change without clarifying what we actually mean. Change as outcome or change as process. And really understand what people are resisting towards. I think we we are a little bit too generous with applying resistance to change label without understanding what that actually is targeted towards. And I would love to see more leaders when they go into change conversations asking at least once during those conversations, what do we need to preserve in addition to all other questions? Love that. Love that. Tiffany, same question. Who you make me follow my <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till we talk one-on-one, -on -one, uh, Manola. It's going to be beautiful. And so much is going to happen on the other side of that. Um, I'm chomping at the bed. I like wiggling in my chair. Um, I, for me, I believe I would love to see leaders understand the human aspect and putting people at the center of the change, at the heart of the change, because it's not just about all these things we want to get done. We need people to enable that change. And so I would love to see a world and this transformation where leaders understand that more and that they're enacting that as well as doing the actual change and not just surveying folks just to survey them because that survey and action fatigue is a real thing. Thank you for bringing that forward, Manola. Oh my goodness. So what a great conversation. We could have gone on for a long time and, and there is still time. From June on of this year, we're still putting together some wonderful people, community events and stay tuned for the next time. I've been privileged to have Manola Jack Tiffany Castano in the house with me today. I, I feel the need to play this one more time. <laughs>